Well, while Manchester United are riding high, their neighbours continue in some sort of footballing crisis. Manchester City battling against relegation and big stakes to play for against bottom club Swindon Town. An anxious day for both managers involved, Ray Stubbs reports. When Brian Halton succeeded Peter Reid as manager of Manchester City, he can't have realised what was over the next few pages. He got the perfect start right enough, a win at Swindon last September. But dark days soon followed. The trauma of the drawn-out boardroom takeover by the Francis Lee Consortium and a crippling injury list took their toll. Suddenly, City were looking at relegation. Now installed as chairman, Francis Lee wants results. Brian Horton is no one's fool. He's aware of the whispers, that his job is on the line. There's no time to worry about such things. When I had the first meeting with him a month ago, before the Ipswich game, there was nothing said about any time span. I didn't ask for a time span, so all those things about this could be my last game, I don't know. That's never been fed to me from him or his, or his other directors at all. So I know, Ray, that we have to get results, like Joe Royal, like Dave Bassett, like John Gorman, who I had a drink with last night. We're all in that same situation, aren't we? I look back now at Oxford's results, Hull City's results, Luton's results, and Dennis Smith's in the same boat as me. We're all in the same boat, aren't we, managers? You've got to be winning. If anyone as much as suggested that John Gorman's position as manager of Swindon was in doubt, there'd be civic unrest. But keeping the Wiltshire Club in the Premier League will be an incredible achievement. So today's match brought together Swindon, bottom of the table, against Manchester City, fourth from bottom. Relegation to be avoided at all costs, a friendship would have to be put on hold. We need to win, they need to win, so we're both going to be fraught, aren't we, today for 90 minutes? We know that, but at the end of it, there's nothing you can do at, at about 10 to 5. You know, so as I said, we'll have a drink, David Hay and John will come in for a drink, and that's the way it'll always be. Could be a big day for Swindon, John. You could lift yourselves away from that bottom place today. Absolutely, and um, that's what we aim to do. I mean, as I said, in, in today's game, the friendship's gone when that 90 minutes starts, and um, we de definitely want to get off the bottom, and we want to make it today. And even after today's game, there would still be a long way to go before the relegation issue would be settled. But both managers were well aware that defeat would be very damaging to their Premier League health. And when it is all decided, Swindon will remember the first 10 minutes of this match. Steve McMahon, dispossessed, illegally in his view by John Munker, and it was Andy Much who played in Fjortoft. Just recently, the Norwegian doesn't miss. That was goal number eight in six games for Fjortoft. Swindon ahead in eight minutes. Arguably the crucial moment of the game followed soon after. From Nicky Summerby's cross, the Norwegian got above Michel Vonk and firmly headed into the city goal, only for the celebrations to be cut short. Swindon were of the opinion the referee's decision cost them the game. Referee Peter Folk's reaction revealed he'd seen a push. Who knows how the City fans would have reacted at being two down, but it wasn't long before they were cheering an equaliser. Richard Edgehill's driven cross ended up in the Swindon net. Edgehill really gave it a whack. The unlucky Swindon defender was Kevin Horlock, the ball going in off his knee. One all at half-time, and it was a goal worthy of winning a match that City scored after 50 minutes. David Rocastle kept his composure and his balance. 2-1 to City, Rocastle's first goal since joining the club from Leeds, and already he's become a main road favourite. Needless to say, Swindon pressed and pressed. They'll feel they should have equalised. Terry Fenwick's header was dealt with by Andy Dibble, in for the injured Tony Coton. They were still piling forward a minute from time. Andy Much headed just wide from Frank McAvenny's cross. Things were tense too in the vicinity of the two dugouts. Words had been exchanged during the game between Messrs Halton and Gorman. One was hoping the referee would forget to look at his watch, the other praying for the final whistle. The ball was in the city penalty area again when it sounded. It signalled a vital win for the main road club and a vital win for Brian Horton himself. It was Swindon and John Gorman who had to suffer today.